<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. So, uh, so yeah, tell me a little bit about um, when you were growing up, your childhood, uh, in terms of football and, um, and what it was like Montreal to Miami and how that happened. Cause that in itself is a change of atmosphere, right? Yeah. You know, uh, I came to, uh, I live in uh, Cameroon for what, uh, 11 years because why the reason why I'm saying that, because my parents, they came here in Canada before me. Mm. They left me with my uncles, uh, and, uh, my members of family anyway. You know, Africa, everybody, kid is a kid. Mm -hmm. So I grew up like that. I stopped playing soccer. I was what, on the street, barefoot. So me, it wasn't really more than enjoy uh, to enjoy the game. I was just playing. And I, I didn't have that dream to be like, oh, I want to be a soccer player. So when I came in Canada, my parents, they, they brought me over in Canada. I was 12. So I started seeing people. Uh, I wanted to play soccer because that's the only thing I know. And I'm, I'm, I'm like, I was like, football. I want to play football, football. But you know the way my body type, I wasn't the, the regular soccer player. So they, they subscribed me to um, to a, a real uh, American football. Oh. <laughs> because football for them, I was, I was a big dude. So I guess that's what I wanted to, to play. Mm. They, 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 they quickly see then I didn't know nothing about football <laughs> that type of football so and then they told me like ah soccer is that what you mean soccer I'm like ah, yeah so I went to play soccer yeah I used to play all the positions I played goalkeeper to uh, defender left back right back uh, left big field so I did all kind of position before mm. you know what one day I was like you know what I came back to my parents and I'm like you know what I've been going to tournament and stuff like that. And my parents, they used to tell, uh, my neighbor, they used to tell my parents, you know, African parents, they don't, they want you to go to school more than anything. So they don't care yeah. about playing. They don't have time to, to play. Mm -hmm. I remember that my, uh, one of my neighbor told my, uh, my, uh, my dad, you know, your son is pretty good at soccer. Yeah? And my dad came to me, I'm like, yeah, but they say that you're pretty good at soccer. What did they know about soccer here? Nice. so yeah, we left it that way and one day I was like you know what I came back home and I told him listen I want to play soccer professional they they thought I was joking so nice. I started looking for um, I subscribed myself to a soccer uh, club mm -hmm. from there Quebec Soccer Federation called me because uh, they liked the way I was playing so they get me into the uh, soccer, uh, what do you call that? Qu Quebec soccer. Uh, it's like Ontario. Ontario. Oh, team. okay. Like, was it a provincial team? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. provincial. So when we went to the first provincial, I think we lost. No, no, we won against Ontario. Mm -hmm. So after that, I think then it was, uh, you know, there was certain interest. Mm -hmm. And what I did, uh, they have one of one of uh, African guy. Who saw us? It was three of us, me, Josue. I think you remember him. Yeah, with the dreads. So, yeah, man. Yeah, there you go. But this has always been my buddy. So everywhere that I went, you know me. I'm like, a, I'm a, a, I'm African. If I go somewhere, I bring you gotta you come. Me. There you I go. I tried that so, too, man. I did so that too. Yeah. They have a lot of guys, and you know what? Along my career, I always bring them, regardless if they was playing the same position than me. We try to survive, man. When you survive, you don't doesn't matter yeah. uh, where you're from. So you just want to survive. So yeah, and you need your bad. brothers with you, man. Because you yeah. know what? I I went I went when I finally made you know getting out of Toronto Links is hard. Yeah. Like that situation yeah. was, was brutal, right? Yeah. And and when I went over and I got over to Czech Republic, I brought Chris Williams with me. Yeah, that, you yeah. know what I mean. You bring them because you know if they're if they're good and they deserve it, but they can't find a way. That's it. That's yeah. our job. That's our job. So yeah. I end up uh, because there was one African. Then what he did for us, he he got us all the scholarship to go to uh, IMJ Academy. Mm. Oh, so we were young, so we went there. So we do school training. IMG Academy for certain people they don't know is Politeri Academy today is the IMG because mm -hmm. it was a uh, it was built by a, a tennis guy 
It was yeah. a tennis guy owner. So they are all. William, uh, Anna Konnikova, all those the, we saw all of them, all the Venus William sisters. Yeah, yeah. I had a I had a big crush on Anna Konnikova. Yeah. Konnikova, she was yeah. uh, she was hot when she was used to play. She played two yeah. balls. Just getting uh, you hear her yelling from far when she hitting that ball. So yeah. we just just to sit and watch. Anyway, but if yeah. we, we grew up there, we we're probably one of the uh, the earliest people to to go to Bodhicherry Academy, who's now IMG. So mm. for us, it was like a, we are the first experience of soccer because it was soccer, basketball, tennis, uh, foot, uh, American football. Mm. So after we finished there after four years, we graduated and everything. That's what I find myself signing in Montreal oh. and in the end of the season. That's crazy. Cause you, so you've always been a high caliber player because like, mm-hmm. I didn't know that any of that. I didn't know yeah, none of that. I, I just assumed. I signed with Montreal. I was the youngest. I, I was at 17. No, I wow. signed my first pro contract. Oh, wow. So that's big news in Montreal then. Exactly. I came in. I was in the, it was in the middle of, of the season. Uh-huh. And what I did for the rookie year, I, I think I scored like every game I scored. I was I still probably one of the rookie or have the most goals when I came there. Wow. wow. So, that's one of the things then when I play there and I did half of the season. Mm-hmm. Then Miami Fusion call. For right. people that don't know, Miami was a, one of the the toppest team in the league mm-hmm. back then. And for me, it was one of the first, I think, Canadian who got drafted on the super draft of the MLS. Mm-hmm. And I got into a little problem with Montreal. <laughs> Because they didn't want to let me go, and they didn't even tell me. Then it was some something they wanted to. Uh, there was interest on me, so they didn't let me know. I didn't know anything until one day. I think we went with a national team in Mexico, and that's what I found out. And there was a team keep looking for me. They wanted to talk to me. No, nobody would have given them my number. So you guys today we don't understand that. Um, you know the the. The, the path is so it's like laid down for them in a way they don't understand that um, when you say these stories, if you're not talking to me, they're going to assume that there is an excuse or something like that, you know, but back in those days when we were, cause you're not too far in age for me. Um, I'm 83. I don't I'm know. Young. When are you? I don't know about you. I'm young. <laughs> <Where's> the, <laughs> when you retire, when you retire from football, you're still not even a man yet. You know, <laughs> So, so I'm young. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're young. But anyways, uh, at those times, man, things like that used to happen where, it, you know, the system wasn't made to kind of like prop you up, especially guys like us. Right. And yeah. when I say guys like us, I mean, if you weren't English, Irish or Scottish, for the most part, um, man, you had a oh, tough friends. time. I'm just it's real talk. I'm not, you know, BSing or anything. I'm just telling the truth. Right. Like if you were an Italian, Irish, Scottish. And I have nothing against them, but that was just the system that we were in. You didn't get a lot of support. And um, and things like that would happen where for their own self-interest, they would hold you back from making more money, for providing for your family, uh, for your career, and for going to Europe. Like, people don't understand that that's the life that we went through, you know? No. So yeah. It's a lot of story like that. But when you talk about, uh, you talk to people, and sometimes, you know what? I felt like I'm, I got tired of trying to tell people, but today is a little bit more better because mm-hmm. young people that oh, 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 old guys or people with experience now they can tell you be careful, don't do this. Or uh, today, everybody looking for the image. Before they didn't have those social media, so you can blast or you can tell your story mm-hmm. in front of everybody, and the club can lose a lot of uh, money or stuff like that. So nobody was accountable of that. And everybody right. just tried to play like, oh, no, it's not me. Mm-hmm. It's not you. It's the organization who's holding people back. So, yeah. So, so when, when, when you got, when you, you finally got wind of that on the national team. Now, which one was that? Was that like you, like what national team was that one? Was that the same one that you went to the World Cup with or? or yeah, because that, the story about the World Cup, I have to tell you, because I got kicked out. Yes, I didn't go to that. 
Yeah, you're surprised. That's right. right. No, yeah. you but you did the interview, yes. but you didn't go to the World Cup. Exactly. Right. I remember yeah. that because I was looking. Yes, I remember yeah, that. Because of the Paul, Paul James story. So me and Tam talked about Mr. Paul James, right? <laughs> you guys, you guys need a psychologist for that stuff. Thank God your career ended the way it did because <laughs> you would be shaking right now because yeah. people don't understand that our... <laughs> Our national team needs to apologize to a whole generation of talent and they'll mm -hmm. probably never do it. But we had a coach that was on crack cocaine. And do you know how many players fell out from a national team program because of one guy and nobody says anything? He told me stories about what happened with you guys. And I was just I, was, I stood quiet for about 20 minutes just listening. So oh, especially you, because he had a problem with you. Like, me, you have a problem directly with me and personal. But me, I was built different. My my dad always tell me, you know what? You, you grew up in Africa. You, you got overtrained for your day. So I feel like it's a blessing because you always repeat me. I'm more worried about your sisters and brother, but mm -hmm. I'm not worried about you because you, you got overtrained. So right. me, to, to, to get in my brain, you gotta you gotta break some layers and layers and layers of protection. So yeah. lucky for me I was. Because yeah. a lot of things that he say to me and he done to me, even if you talk to people, they will not even believe. No. You know? Yeah. And even if you start talking about it, people they're gonna feel like, oh my God, it's not it can be it can be the truth. But he is the truth. And you know what? He insults some guy, he wanted to fight with some guy, some guy the Bernard. Mm -hmm. uh, my cousin, what he did to him, drop him at the airport for two days. I have to go there and pick him up at the airport and send him. I called one of my contacts in uh, Spain. So for him to be able to wait for me after the national team, we, we are on the training camp in, the, in Germany. Just because he wanted to, to, to play some stupid game with uh, some young kids, tearing them and try to provoke them. And when somebody stand up against him and now you have a bad attitude and you want to bring everybody else against you, mm -hmm. it, was, it was unbelievable. It was it literally was unbelievable. what he did. You're, you're corroborating what, what, uh, what Tam said, right? So and bring, bring like, in, yeah, that's crazy. He, he wanted to form some group and some group then he said, you know what? You guys going to make it. That's the other guys that they're never going to make it mm -hmm. and they're never going to be pro. Mm -hmm. And most of the guys then he said and they're never gonna be pro, they don't want to hand up to be pro. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Because I was on the U17. We yeah. went to uh France and uh, Nantes was coming to watch me play. Mm -hmm. And um we played the game. And we we um I told the coach, I said, Coach, look, uh, I just need to know my number. That's all I need to know what my number is so that they know who who I am. And mm -hmm. they thought that was arrogant. Uh, they benched me in the game. And Paul James, um, after the game, this guy, after the game is over, this guy wanted us to trot around. He wanted us to do a running around the field, like after the game in front of people. Yeah. Uh, and I remember that was my first meeting him, with, like with him kind of, you know. And, um, and I remember there was another time where I was on the U15 national team and they uh, Ray Clark said, you know, I see a lot of potential in you. Ian Hume is doing well, but I think, you know, you have something a little bit different than him. And that's when you guys were on. He was, you know, Ian Hume was advanced for yeah. his age. And uh, and so I went to go train with the U-20 squad that was going to the World Cup. And this guy had guys doing 1v1s full the field. field. Yeah. You know what I'm talking So I'm not, you know, I'm not lying. Yeah, in the no, hot no, sun. Classic. classic. So I came back from this French trip. I heard that Paul James was going to be our national team coach. I never, I quit. And from that moment on, I wasn't allowed on the, I didn't make the national team until the men's because I quit the team because of him. And it was supposed to be like a boycott of all the players. I remember, and none of them did it, but me, you know, but. Well, I, I did, I did the same because from uh, Germany, that story in Germany, they put my cousin out, start trying to fight with him and uh, do all kind of st stuff. So what I did I uh, uh, I tell him off, and I didn't play for the national team until uh, oh 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 get I don't know the uh, it was a German coach Holger Holger Grosiek. Yes, yeah, he yeah. came back. 
he talked to me and I explained to him, I'm, I'm like, listen, this guy insulted me. He wanted to fight with me. He wanted mm -hmm. to do all kinds of things. The only thing mm -hmm. I'm asking so he can come to apologize to me. The national team coach asked him to come to Montreal. I was playing for Montreal to come yeah. apologize to me. So what yeah. I did when I heard that, no problem. He came to Montreal. I think we, we were playing a game against Toronto. Uh, and I scored, by the way. I gave them 2-0 to the mm -hmm. Toronto length. And one thing, I, the coach was waiting. I made him wait for an hour and two hours on the, uh, on the hallway. <laughs> And it was just my condition for me, for him to be able to come and apologize so I can go with a men's national team. And that's the reason why I went back to the men's national team. Damn. The men's or the, or the, because I remember you, I didn't know that you were on the national team before Toronto Lynx. Was this after Toronto Lynx or before Toronto Lynx? Uh, this is after Toronto, Toronto Lynx. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause I remember. Okay. So I remember that. So, uh, okay, we're not going to go through every single team, but <laughs> let's just pick it up like the Toronto Lynx days. This is when I met yeah. you, right? Mm -hmm. um, I remember there was a year you talking about sometimes in the Canadian system, they don't help you or whatever. I'm not trying to bash the Canadian system, right? Like uh, yeah. I was talking with Peru. It was shit on the day, uh, back in the day. It's better yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. It was better oh, now, right? These guys yeah. are good. But um, I, I had come back from Belgium and I had signed something to keep playing over here. You know, mm -hmm. like this is what happens in Canada, right? We don't have a professional league at the time. So you have to sign some, for something. And I signed with Hamilton Thunder and they folded. And so I had, I didn't, I was calling to ask, can I play for another team? Nobody would get back to me. Nobody knew the answer, like nothing. So I sat out a year and this is when I met you. Do you remember Duncan Wild and, yes. and Billy? I think his name. Yeah, was yeah. those two freaks. So... Oh, tilt, tilt your camera so I could see your uh, there. So um, that's when I met you because that was the year when I, I wanted to play bad. And I was like, yo, Ali, I, you know, I was a big fan and I was on you all the time. I'd come in the dressing room and you'd be there after training and I'd be like, yo, Ali, man, I promise you, man, if I ever played with you, you would score so many goals. It would be unbelievable. And I kept talking to you all the time. I must have been an annoying kid, but no, no, man. No, man. I was like, but I was serious because I would train with you guys and yeah. I would do well. And I remember, and then yeah. you, made, you made the funny joke that he put me on the starting line, my lineup and I wasn't even registered. Remember that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, but I, you know, but then the next year you were still there. Um, you know, I remember, I think I remember you signed some kind of contract where I remember you were getting pretty comp pretty good compensation good yeah. for you and um and that's when me you Huffman Al Tabi and a bunch of guys from Montreal we were all there and um and and yeah we played together but we it was dysfunctional like the way how it was run it was the last year you know you had Busby there um there's stories <laughs> whatever um you know and and it was dysfunctional that was so sad because I remember thinking how I looked at the team and I went, when you go through this list of players, how are we not winning? What it, it was so amazing to me. And then you left, you went to Montreal, right? And then all of a sudden, Ali's scoring goals, huh? Ali's doing so well, huh? Ali's on the national team. What? Like it was like four weeks. And then all of a sudden you went from not being on the national team to scoring all the time from Montreal in front of these big crowds and boom, Mali, Ali got a call up. Oh, Ali scored in his call up. Ali's on the national team. Where's Ali? Ali's in Sweden. Huh? This all happened in like, it felt like six months. Am I wrong? <laughs> oh, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Yeah. And, and so, but just the fact that you were able to do that and to jump just shows that you know, you were never supposed to be here in the first place. Like even from Montreal, you just weren't supposed to be going through Montreal, then Fusion, then back to Montreal, and then to Toronto Lynx. And then, you know, you should have never been there. You should have been overseas a long time before you did. So how did because you feel about that, though? Me, what I feel about it, because I feel like, you know what? People, they wanted to hold us down to something that they never reached. Mm. So me, that's why I always say that it was just pure frustrating people because t talent doesn't lie. Mm -hmm. You know, when you see talent, sometimes 
uh, Paul Jim used to get mad at me. You know, I mean, I never been, I never built, I never built to run like a, a like, eight miles like, in three minutes. No, it doesn't make sense to my body type. I would never be. I always no. know then. I will. I only have one thing. I know how to score goals. Mm -hmm. That's my job. So mm -hmm. for him, he used to tell me, Ali, you don't. Uh, you, you always look like you don't have, want to put effort on it. I'm like, listen, me. It's my job to score goals. Put me on the field. I put me the ball. I'll score. That's what I would want. Bucks. Eighteen so yard bucks. For yeah. certain people, they thought then since we have a talent, it was easy for us. Mm -hmm. And since we have that talent, we're gonna be we're gonna be doing more than what they did. Mm. So the best way to bring us down, I thought then it was to insult us or to make it hard for us or whatsoever. But all those things I think then, you know what? Sometimes the people ask me, would you do a different role? No. Mm. Because those things that build me who I am today. So I can be holding I can be holding grudges against them, but in the end of the day, I'm like, you know what? He built my character stronger. But mm -hmm. in the same time, I'm like, I don't feel that people they should have that power as a Paul James to be mm -hmm. able to decide or to have anything to say about somebody's life. Mm -hmm. And that's why they break a lot of people's life or dreams. Mm -hmm. And people that couldn't make this country way faster, better, way better than it is now. Yeah, Ali, like, uh, there's a certain individual who uh, we all know um, who has contact uh, in the national team. And the question was asked, is this team better than the other teams of the past? Talking about basically from 2003 to probably around 2010. I call that the golden era. You can name the guys. It's just ridiculous. The guys that's on that, that, you know, that came through the national system at that time. And, you know, the person said, no, it's just that some of the other teams that we play against now are not as good either. Meaning when it, let, let's go. Okay. There's you leading goal scorer for the longest while on the national team, right? 15 goals and plus, right. And that's just for the men's um, your goal ratio is high in terms of you're in front of the net, how many chances you get and how many goals you score. It's not a matter of how many games you played and how many goals you score, because we suffered with quality, um, uh, not crosses, but quality in getting in into service, finishing service. position. Service, service, service. As a striker, you're starved as a Canadian. I mean, yeah. it's just always back to goal, nothing in front, nothing to attack. So that doesn't count. But how many times did he make contact with the ball in the 18-yard box and miss versus how many? You might have one chance. Oh, my oh, two and a half. Maybe if you're lucky. Yeah. And that's a half chance. And if you yeah. could score half that, you're a world-class striker. Because world-class strikers get chances upon chance. I mean, so anyways. So you <laughs> have get to, emotional. I, I know, I know, I know, I know. Eh? I know. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. You got you. You got jewels. Yeah. You got teams. Yeah. You got fast guys like Josh Simpson on the side who came a little bit yeah. later. You got Issei Nakajima. You got Tam Nasaliwa. Then you got you got Hastings. You got Reda. You got, I mean, you have all these guys. You got um, Paul Staltery, you know, um, even Rosinski at one point. You know, you got Chris Pozniak. You got, I, I can name off a whole bunch I of got, guys. I got lucky to play with him, man. Work last man. Who? Thomas. Rosinski. I came to watch, oh man, I'm telling you, people don't understand. And that's kind of why we're doing this. But these are all people playing on high levels, high levels on their club team, making money for their family, for their children, success. You know what I mean? Come to the national team and that success is not replicated. And yeah. people look at and they think, oh, maybe it's the players. Maybe it's not. When you look at all these players go back to their club teams, they're one of the best players on the team. So yeah. how is it that when they come together now that this thing ain't flying? How come this thing ain't working? You know, and people don't understand that when you were on TV and, you know, the crap that was going on at the hotel or the fact that you had to fly in the, the day before yeah. the game and you guys never trained. Like, yeah. you know, it was um, tough. It's not, it's not to be able to. Uh, uh, I don't want to take whatever new the, the new generation. The guy, the, if they, they call it, you got lucky, you got lucky. It's, no problem with that. I Me, mean, the only thing that people, I always tell people, 
how can you build a chemistry on 48 hours? If you answer me that, then I'm okay. Mm. How did you build a chemistry in 48 hours? Mm -hmm. yeah. It doesn't make sense. If, when it comes to talent to talent, everybody is gifted and everybody is talented. Mm -hmm. But whatever makes you better is the whole organization. Now, mm -hmm. Canadian soccer is a little bit more organized. Mm -hmm. And not to knock off the competition or whatsoever. Every generation is different. If mm -hmm. I think then this is the, the, the new generation is not that good than the before, I would, uh, it would be it would be more like we try to hate on them or whatsoever. Yes, it is good. So everything I have to give to them. You know what? You guys work hard to be where you are. But the only thing I want, the respect, then all those guys that you name, mm -hmm. they paved the way. Those the the Rosario, uh, Paul, uh, Alex Bombery, mm -hmm. all those guys that we inspire us and make us believe that we can be a nation of soccer. Mm -hmm. yeah that's i think that... that's what i want to, to give to them the other yeah. generation you know what they came there we fight some fight they didn't even know mm -hmm. it was a fight so today thank god you represent us i'm happy and i hope i will be in the, uh, qatar to support them because i think yeah. you know what yeah it's What's a blessing time? so yeah man. it's a blessing yeah. and we should be more we should be more happy about what they accomplish mm -hmm. and we'll be to be proud of what we've done for this country. Mm -hmm. We, Because, everybody, everybody. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. I'm not expecting people to give it to us. I'm expecting to be proud. Mm -hmm. Whenever you see Canadian flag, whenever you see those Canadian boys play, mm -hmm. me, I know where we're coming from. Ali, I know that your, your time is almost up. So I'm going to ask you one more question and then we'll do this another time. Fair? No um, I always wanted to know this. These are questions that I always wanted to know. I don't think anybody yeah. has ever asked you before, but um, two of them, but I'll, I'll save it anyways. How <laughs> did you get to Sweden from Montreal? How'd that happen? That happened what? I will give credit to Frank Yallop. And I was just talking to to uh, to some person. I want to play because I have a company who represent athlete now. Oh, you, we gotta talk. Yeah. So, talk. so uh, it's called Aima. Even if you see to Instagram, you're gonna find uh, Aima. It's a new company who just try to make noise, but we just want to make sure we, we give the service with quality. You know me, what I prone. So, and I was talking with uh, one of my athletes. I'm like, you know what? You know who give me my a chance with the national team? It was Frank Yallop. He called me. And I went there. It was a Gold Cup. And I scored goal for fun. You know what he did? He called one of his friends in Sweden. And he said, listen, you need a forward? I have a forward for you. The guy never say, uh, saw me. He signed me. That's the way he signed me that without even asking questions. Yeah. That's Frank Yallop. So you have love for Frank Yallop. Yes, I have Mad respect and everywhere that I've been, he's always going to tell Ali always appreciate whatever I've done for him. And every time that I came with the national team and he was the coach, I would pour my heart. The all time you see the Gold Cup when he, I was just going to play for him for the fun of it. Frank Yala did a lot for me. Um, yeah. He's the one uh, that got me back on the national team um, on the scene. And I, I didn't know if he was real or not, to be honest, because I came in and at the time I was in Hungry Bro and it was it was a struggle. I mean, I was playing, but it's not a place where you want to live. It's just a place where you're playing because you have to. You know what I mean? And he called me up. I remember that gave me credibility. Um, it got teams interested in me to get me out of that situation. And I went into that camp in Florida, which is basically like uh, tilt your camera up again. It's 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 because I'm now I'm starting to see like your eyes like this. Um, it was basically like a um, uh, like a like a vacation. Basically, you guys were never on that trip because you guys were the main guys. But the guys that you know whatever they would they would bring in and they would play these local guys. And I got called in and he was there. And I remember he sat down at the table and he kind of shook his head and I was like, "Cramp, I thought I did good, you know." And he goes, "I don't know what to say, man. I don't know why you're not." We have no excuse for you not to be on the team. 
And I was like, what? And this is right before the, the Gold Cup. Mm-hmm. And he goes, yeah, we have a game coming up and we're going to try to, you know, see what happens. But, you know, then he moved to L.A. Galaxy and then yeah. a new coach came. And then after that, that was Dale Mitchell. And then another one Dale came. Mitchell. And that was Stephen Hart. So I didn't get my start until Stephen Hart. But um, but yeah, he was a good guy. And he gave me some advice. He gave me the advice that every he said that I was running around like coming deep for the ball, trying to pick it up, turn, play off and get back up top. And he stopped the session. And he goes, what are you doing? And I said, well, you know, I'm coming deep because I'm not getting the ball. And he goes, no. And he took me by the, like by the elbow and he walked slowly to the halfway point. And he goes, you don't move from here. And I said, but how am I going to get the ball? And he goes, look, you take one step forward, you drop your shoulder and you turn 180 on the defender and you get the ball behind. I said, if you're that fast, you don't need to touch the ball in front of the defender. You touch it behind him. And I pause and he goes, are you sure? I said, he said, yeah, that's exactly what I want. And I started doing that, man. And I became a striker. I was playing like a, like a winger in a striker position. Yeah. He changed my whole, and ever since then, I always give him credit for that. Changed everything. So no, he, he was a good person. And I know that he yeah. helped a lot of Dero too, because everything that he went, he brought Dero with him. Mm. So, yeah. Okay. Um, okay, man, we'll, we're going we're gonna to stop we there. Two, we have a two question. I'll take the last one. <laughs> okay. When I first knew you, I knew you as Ali Enga. Yes. On TV. What yeah. was the name change? Why? I, it's easy to explain because, you know, a lot of people, they don't understand the, the cult, African culture. Mm. When you're born, my parents, they, they give family name to, like, uh, your grand-grandfather they used to if maybe a warrior or whatever, or the best hunter, whatever you want. So they mm-hmm. gave me uh, the the name of one of my uh, grand uh, grandpa uh, parent. Mm. So when we came here, it was a lot of things at, at school and people that was like, we don't get it. How come you guys have a different family name? Let me say you 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 guys are a family brother. Mm-hmm. So that's the way that now my parents, they, they, they got stuck asking that. Even when they're feeling passport, they used to have, can you prove us that mm-hmm. this is your kid? So they went through so many stuff. Then they, you know what? They asked for the government to be able, can we just stick with this name on the, mm-hmm. on the paper? No. So that's, that's what happened. So it wasn't that a big thing or what. It was just more than they got tired of being confused all the time because people, they didn't understand that culture. Right. So right. recently, I coach. Uh, I have a because I have a soccer complex, mm-hmm. complex tracker. You have to come and check it out. Mm-hmm. Only, only forward. Follow <laughs> them on, on Instagram, complex tracker. Oh shoot! Okay. So you have to go and check it out and see what's going on there. So I have a two some of a two African, you know, and uh, they have it's the twins. And they have both family names different. Uh, you wow. know how many problems they get? So I'm like, you, you guys, sooner or later, you're going to be turned like and You're going to have to change the name yeah. to put a one name. Yeah. Um, so that's why. So for African, it's not that a big question. Because mm-hmm. me today, if I have a kid, I want to be like, you know what? You affect my life. I'll give you your name. Like to... Yeah. To remember that person, so that's the way thing work in Africa. But it's different here, so we have to adapt. So right, I'm adapting. Okay, okay. <laughs> and one more thing, in the la- it's not a question. I just wanted to say before we started this, I started recording a segment. I was listening to music before you even came on. Yeah. Um, you, you scored a goal. I have it on. I have it on film. By the way, in this whole interview, I'm. There's going to be parts where this video while we're talking, like showing yeah. what we're talking about. So, you know, I, I sent you some examples about Issa. No other guys. Um, you scored this goal and it was a nice goal. I think it was a diving header in between a defender and a, I think it was a Gold Cup goal, I think. And you ran off to the side and then you did this like African. I know now I know it's an African dance, but you did this dance. Yeah. And, and I was like, oh, Ali could dance. Like, what is that? And yeah. you brought me on to african music yeah and now you see on instagram it's everywhere right these people can yeah. dance happy music dance right even um you know bony wilfried yes 
Okay, Bon Iver first try because you know the Cote d'Ivoire. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He was with me in Sparta Prague. So he used to come to my house and we used to I used to give him food because you know their food's kind of <laughs> sketchy. <you know? laughs> <laughs> so that's that that whole dancing thing kind of yeah. started there. And you put me on that because of that one celebration that you did. And I was like, what? But that's not like reggae. And that's not like soca. That was something else. And so that, that I got was, on that. That was the blood. That was going deep. That was the, the, the root. Yeah. So I started ever since then. I've been, and I don't listen to anything else when I'm happy. I like this. My wife too. She has a head wrap and everything. And she she listens to just straight up African music, man. So yeah, you yeah. wanna you wanna know that I'm having a good day? Yeah. I'm playing some. Caesar, <laughs> Kalanji, Kalanji. I'm playing some African because you know what? I always thought we're living on a cold country. You need mm-hmm. to get warm. And when I have that, you know what? My heart yeah. just like you know what? You stimulate me, and I'm just happy. And it doesn't mean that there will good thing happen to me. Regardless, if there are bad thing happen to me, I listen to reggae, African music. I'm just like you know what? I feel so happy. I'm like, I understand why, where this music coming from. Even if yeah. you don't even hear, know the word, mm-hmm. you just get this. I, I, you, I always tell people, you get in this voodoo trance. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you start acting African, but even if you've never, you never been to Africa, I'm like, so yeah. that's what it is. Yeah, man. It's like good food, man. There's a difference, right? There's well, fast food. Again, and it, then it, 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 again, what is good food? People, when they go to the African food, I'm like, this gets you just be happy. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lady that used to do my hair when I had braids, man, and she yeah. used to feed me. I used to give her extra tip just for the food. Ah, so go. good, man. Oh, my heart. But Ali, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. And we'll touch base again and finish up. Yeah. No problem. If you have anything, you know where to reach me. Even on Instagram, you can reach me, Ali Jerba. I have uh, two of my company there with uh, Complex Striker. And well, we want to talk about that. We're going to talk about all that. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even know. We got to talk off. off. I'll, I'll text you no about all that stuff because there's some stuff happening. I don't know if Issei filled you in on some of the stuff that's happening behind the scenes. Yeah. And so yeah, yeah. we should No talk. problem. It's very important. All right. Okay.